Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Art of Photography presented by BH Photo and Skylum, creator of Luminar Neo. I'm Vanelli, the Director of Education for Skylum, and I'm really excited to introduce our next guest for you. So let me share my screen. All right, so here we are. Our next guest um, is, is an award winning photographer, uh, educator, speaker, and a competitive judge. Uh, she has written ebooks and she's written ebooks on working with textures and released creative courses along with her husband Dave. They host the visual or the virtual creative photography conference with attendees worldwide. I selected her as a guest because she loves the creative aspect of photography and post processing, especially using textures and software to create unique images using, ready for this, her smartphone. Please welcome Hazel Meredith. Hello, Hazel. Hi, Vanelli. Thanks for having me today. Happy to be oh. here. Awesome. I can't wait for you to show them what you've accomplished, not just with your artistic side. There's no offense. We all do that. But mm -hmm. when you do it with a smartphone, that's the part that really got me excited and, and um, you know, Excited to share them with share you with our guests. Thank you. Yeah, I love, you know, like you said, the creative side of the post processing, um, taking images, especially you know, you have those iconic places everybody's been to, and you can take it and make it your own. You do your own version that nobody else is going to have. So awesome. All right. Well, how about you share your screen and watch? All right. We're going to start with a simple one. Um, some of these talk about some of the concepts that we're going to get into in a little bit. We talk about some composition and um, you know the the great new things that the iPhones can do, as well as a couple of the limitations. I have a few of those later on to show you. Um, this was one from the Smokies um, that I took and just did a, a real quick edit on my phone. There are a few in here that are actually unedited and I'll, I'll let you know which ones those are as well. Um, this is from our back deck. We are now <laughs> living in Tennessee for almost four years. Um, I lived my whole life in Connecticut till we moved. And this is the view from our back deck. So we really, this was a pano shot. Um, look at, and I look just- Look at the light. I love yeah. that light on the and hill this, on the tree top. Yes, that was why I took this because it just was so pretty. This was, um, you know, just as actually this was a sunset one. Usually we get the sunrises over the hillside, but this was a late day. Um, some weather had passed through and the lighting was clearing and this was coming over the top of the house onto that hill. And again, and, this, this is with your smartphone, right? Yes. So yep. And this is just a using? real basic. I now have the smartphone 14 um, Pro Max. Um, and I had gotten this last November as an uh, an update to my eight plus, so it was a pretty big jump for me. So I was totally blown away by what this phone can do and the capabilities and the quality. It's I find myself using it more and more these days um, wow. over my camera because it's just it's easy and there's some lighting conditions I think it handles better than the camera. And I'm going to show you some of those in a minute. Uh, so next up. This is um, another one from the backyard. We get great clouds here. That's what I just love in Tennessee. We have some really great cloud formations, you know, with the storms that pass by and and stuff like that. So again, this was one, you know, in composition. I, you know, kept the horizon low because it was really about the clouds in this instance. And then concert shots. Um, it's really tough to do these and most places don't let you bring a camera anymore. And with this iPhone, this is unedited straight from my iPhone 14. We were sitting in the seventh row, so that did help. <laughs> I have two shots from this guy. So now, now when you do when you do something like this for concerts, mm -hmm. do you have your camera set? Now, I know you're going to go through all of that in a little bit. Yeah. Um, this was just on the regular photo setting. I didn't really change anything. I didn't change any exposure. I just used the native camera. I think I was zoomed in either at the 2X or 3X, um, probably two on this one because I got a wider shot. And um, yeah, th and this is straight from the camera. I haven't done any editing on this at all. Gotcha. So, um, and here's the other one from this same 
concert. Um, it's one of my favorite groups. I'm going to be seeing them again soon. They're called Home Free. If anybody wants to check out their music, it's a all yeah. vocal group. No you know what I love about this, Hazel? Is, is I wrote an article on Photo Focus about this. Mm -hmm. Find pockets of light. So it doesn't yes. matter. And what's neat about this is you're not you're not just talking about cell phone. You're talking about shots in general. Exactly. Concert, yeah, all of the look, concepts apply to both for yeah, sure. Yeah. So look, look. So right now you caught them each in a beautiful pocket of light. Mm -hmm. That's why you're not seeing hard shadows and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah, and but, I was trying to do that and get someone that had the white light on them rather than, you know, the colored lights. The colored lights are nice, but that also yeah. makes it usually, you know, harsher and grainier and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, so to get this shot, obviously people, you know, watch, like you just said, the lights are changing constantly. Mm -hmm. The moment that white light hit, boom, that's what you said. Because I'm sure that you snapped a couple of the purples and stuff. Oh, yeah. It's nice. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely tougher when you've got, you know, like these blue lights and purple lights. And yeah. um, if those are what are illuminating them, it makes it a lot harder. Nice. For sure. Um, and these are a couple of <laughs> concert ones from a local place we go to. They have concerts once a month. It's called Bellamy Hardware. It is an old hardware store that has an entertainment side. Um, bluegrass type um, music generally. And these are, I mean, it's very small, so you're sitting pretty close, but again, it's got white lights on them, so that makes it easier. Um, but when I did this with my Panasonic Lumix, I, I took it there a few times, I had to crank up the ISO to like 6400 to get the same shot that I could get with my cell phone and just not even have to mess around with the phone at all. And not to mention, in fact, the neat thing about this is then you'll, you'll go through some of the editing you'll do with these, mm -hmm. but it's neat because now that's on your cell phone, you can just bump it up quickly to social media. Hey guys, check where I'm at. Exactly. That's what, And that's what we do. A lot of times we'll post, um, both Dave and I will post, you know, shots like this when we're at the venue. And I've even done some video that comes out really good too there um, because you are so close. The next yeah, uh, one thing I found in concert photography like that mm -hmm. is microphones are your biggest nemesis. Yeah, that that's always, you know, they, it's yeah. so hard to get them when they're actually singing and they've got to get close and yeah, it the, makes it really the tough. Water bottle, no problem in post. Yeah. Water yeah. bottle, no problem. Listen, this is unedited. But, this is straight. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. But I'm so, saying that there's yeah. nothing you can do about that microphone. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Some things we just have to work on. <laughs> Except with. Um, this is another one at the Smokies. Um, even though the horizon was kind of in the center, I liked it because the tree extended up. Um, again, I got yes. some nice clouds, but it was a nice foreground. Um, this one I did a little just basic tweaks with the, um, well, just the native editing. Program. See, what I like, Hazel, is that you're showing, this is straight out of the camera, everyone. Um, I haven't, yeah. I haven't even started the processing yet because you want people to realize what you're seeing on your cell phone is the same thing we all see. Yeah. So don't, don't look at the image and think, oh man, this isn't great. Look at, when you look at something like this, don't photograph what you see, photograph what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. So I can't wait to see what your editing is going to do to these. Um, the next few are from inside of a museum, which I would, I took my camera with me. I, I took my, I think I had my, Lum no, I had my Canon. I, I have, still have a 7DD and I had to bracket everything for like HDR with my cell phone. One shot. Here you go. Yeah. yeah because <laughs> it's, like, in the camera. it's just like, this is so much easier. <laughs> so yeah, I have a couple from this location and this was very dim. I, I mean, there's a light up here, but there's not a, ton of lighting in there. This cabin had no interior lights. It's just light from the doorways. There's a doorway over here, kind of where I'm standing, and this one here, and I have a couple shots here. So, so was this on a tour, or what was this on? No, it, it's self-guided. It's the Museum of Appalachia, and oh, um, you just can wander through. And What do you do when you've got people in the seat all the time? Um, it wasn't really busy that day, so luckily I didn't really have an issue with that at this location. Um, sometimes you just have to, you know, hang out and wait a little bit if you do. But it, we were there early in the morning. They had just opened, so there were only a handful of people walking gotcha. around yet, and it was during the week. Now, now Paul from, from uh, Vimeo asked a really good question. Did you shoot these in RAW or JPEG? 
Um, probably some of each. I think the concert ones, I, I'm not sure I did change those to raw. These I did from this location. I did shoot raw um, for yeah. this. So I think I think the a great a good answer for that would be depending on like you like there's a snapshot. The difference between a snapshot yeah. is something you want to keep forever. Snapshots shoot in raw and JPEG because you're going to fill up that phone yeah. and your hard drives. But something that you know you're going to do something with it afterwards. Mm -hmm. Then right? Would you agree to that or? Definitely. Yeah. Um, I, I do, you know, like, like you said, sometimes shoot in raw, often I'll just shoot in the, in JPEG. And again, I haven't done anything to this. So I would do a little bit of perspective correction here. Um, you know, tone down these highlights a little bit. And there's one more shot from here. This is the other side of the room. Um, so the exposure was a little bit better, but you could, you know, pull in a little more detail in that window, try and clone out this rope. Um, because I wanted to get the whole scene, you know, again, some perspective correction. Um, and, and forgive me, but what is it? H-E-I, what is H-E-I-V? H-E-I-C. H-E-I, I, I have no idea what that stands for. H -E it's basically the raw format. Okay, gotcha. For, for now, is that phone. all smartphones or is that iPhone specific? That's iPhone. Um, Androids can do raw. I believe the newer ones Um I have yeah, to look on Dave right to <laughs> see. Yeah, Dave has a um, Google Pixel 7 and, and he gets great shots with that one too. Yeah. He, we both got new ones in November. And um, yeah, and he, I, I'm pretty sure it has a raw setting. I'm just not sure what gotcha. it's called. Yeah, I'll check there. that while we're going on. Um, yeah, you're and, right, expert and, raw, thank you. Yeah, and here's one more from that same room. Uh, I really like this one and this was actually a cabin that the um mark twain's family had stayed in they oh, lived wow. in appalachia and um yeah it was when he was uh, a child before he got to connecticut and next uh this one i thought was a great illustration of what it can do um this is in the um in Bristol, Tennessee, there's a, a, muse, a museum for the, the history of country music. And this is a like 180 degree screen that you stand in front of and they're showing all these different things and it's changing very quickly. But usually things like that tend to get very pixelated when you're shooting like a screen or a monitor or anything. And I thought this came out really well um, considering that it was like a movie playing, so. Just one more thing. I was impressed with the um, the phone. Nice. And this one, um, this was also getting into um, talking a little bit about perspective, um, getting high, getting low, not just standing and taking a photo all the time. And again, that goes for cameras as well as our phones. This one I had just bent over and I had my phone maybe a couple inches above the ground and um, this was Memorial Day weekend at a, a rest area um, not far from us. And um, I liked that this flag was very sharp and just the natural um, bokeh that the camera applied, you know, blurred these out a little bit. And this one I did have to take into Photoshop because there was a, a, a SUV parked right behind this group oh. of flags. And I was like, I, I couldn't get rid of it on the phone. I did do the editing on the phone and then I did take it to Photoshop to um, use content aware. And then I had to do a little bit of cloning in the middle here, but <laughs> it was, you know, just one of those you had to play with a little bit. And then again, getting perspective up high, there was a, um, some um, overlooks up the mountain where you could look out over the lake and this dam. And I just, you could never get this if you were, you know, down at ground level, um, you wouldn't get the, the beautiful color of, of the water and all that. This one I did do um, editing on this one, these couple here in the phone, I nice. edited it. This one is not edited. This is one of the local barns. I love to photograph. Again, perspective, it's a, it's a driveway that goes up here, um, but just, not just necessarily standing up at the top and taking the photo, um, but also, you know, standing low and getting that little bit of different perspective sometimes is really cool. Great. Yeah. So, so we talked about composition and perspective. Mm -hmm. yep. right? And I have yep. 
one more for that. Um, the next thing is framing oh, that's when it. you're doing your shots. Um, so this was one, uh, this is oh. in Arizona. Um, it's called Tuzugu. It's a national monument. And um, it, just getting these rocks. And I did need to edit this to bring out some of the detail in the shadows, which I did on the phone. Um, and then tone down there was a little bit of highlights and there was a little railing here I, I cloned out. But just to, you know, frame the scene a little bit, give you a perspective of the mountains way in the distance, as well as, you know, the different rocks and formations here. And then another one, um, just framing with tree branches. And, and I, I moved around quite a bit to get, I wanted to be able to see this steeple of this church in the distance and still get the front of the barn and the, the hay bales as well as some of the, the leaves. I could get rid of that one, but that didn't really bother me that that one branch was in front of it. I just thought it, it framed it rather nicely. Nice. And then um, macro. You can do macro with your um, phone. And I know with the new iPhone, if you get close enough to a subject uh, down in the um, lower left corner, the little tulip shape pops up to let you know that you're shooting in macro mode. And it, I just shot this um, iris bud and it gave me this natural, beautiful bokeh in the background on the grass and, and way up here. This is another barn I love to shoot that sits up on a hill. Um, so you can also do macro. And I have another one of those. Again, handheld with the cell phone, macro, get real close. Um, I was trying to focus on the water drops. And then th the background is just the phone did all that for me. I didn't have to do anything here. And this one, I, I did not process. This one is straight from the phone. And, and then we, I mentioned earlier panoramas. This is another one. Um, this is a sunrise over <laughs> our back deck, off the back deck. Um, just was gorgeous clouds, beautiful colors. And um, yeah, just did a pano shot and minor tweaks to it. Really didn't need much of anything. And then you can get into um, different apps for the phones now that can do yeah. different techniques. So. We have, you know, of course, the native um, cameras in the phone. And with the new iPhones, there are, are the three cameras on the back. And it is best to shoot um, when you open up your cameras. Can I share my phone for a second? Is that OK? Yeah. Um, let me go ahead and do. Oh, good. So many things open here. Let's try this way. How do you normally share your phone? Um, because I have an iPhone and a PC, oh, right. um, yeah. there's a program called PhonePaw, F-O-N-E-P-A-W, that lets me share gotcha. wirelessly my screen. Um, let's see, I think it's already shared here. There it is. Yep. Um, so let me get off of there. You know, for the next, for the eternal amount of our friendship, I'm going to mock you for your desktop. You know that, right? <laughs> So go on. I do have a lot on my phone. So I mentioned that uh, macro icon. If I hold my phone really close to my desk, you can see this little, um, the tulip letting me know that I'm close enough that it's going to go into macro mode. But we have the preset 0.5, 1x, 2x, or and 3. And it's really better to choose one of these and not just do the pinch zoom, the in-between. You'll get uh -huh. better results by using one of these cameras because you're using the, 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 I always forget which is which, you've got digital zoom and, and then, the, the, then the optical. optic zoom. So the optical is gonna be better quality where the digital tends to get more pixelated. So it's, gotcha. it's better to go with these and then crop it later and, and you know, play with it that way. Um, and then we have, let's see, different, cameras. So the next one, let me show you. I'll show you what the app looks like, and then I'll show you the, um, the result. So Average Camera Pro. Um, and this one, I believe, is iPhone only. 
And this lets you take from, click on here. Oh, it's going to take pictures. It lets you take from one to 12 pictures. You can kind of see it's doing it as I'm moving the phone. And I'll show you a better result. Let's go back over here. That's 12 shots as I was just rotating the camera slightly oh, okay. as it's taking each picture. So you can do these really cool abstracts. I learned this from Charles Needle <laughs> when I saw one of his presentations actually for our conference. Um, he does a lot of this very impressionistic kind of stuff with the phone. And um, and it's a cool way to kind of play around or or you can do them in a row. And this one I happen to, you know, I was doing in a circle. So there's lots of neat things you can do with that kind of thing. And then another one that I like is this one here. Um, there's two actually, even longer. And I think the better of the two is reheld. And what these let you do is hand hold long exposures. And I'm talking long exposures. So let me show you. So the next shot I have, this is in the Smokies um, this in April this year. And this I did with reheld. And this was five seconds handheld. You know, you have to kind of brace yourself. And if you have a tripod, you can use a tripod, obviously. But the whole point of the phone is to ha have it be quick and easy. And um, you can see there's a little bit of blur on the leaves on this one. So I didn't hold it quite still steady enough or there was a, a little bigger breeze. Um, and then I have another one. This one was also five seconds at a different uh, stream. So it's amazing that you can do this handheld and get that nice soft bokeh on your water with your phone. You don't even have to you know, have your camera with you to do it. So those are a couple of really cool apps for that. And another thing you can do with Reheld when you're doing the long exposures, something I like to play with in my camera is in camera movement. So it's, a, you, and you could also do this with the um, Average Camera Pro, but this one, just by having that longer time frame, set it on a second or two and, and do that same swipe that you would do with your camera is another cool way to play around. Um, with different things. And one more from Reheld I have here. Um, this was also with Reheld. It's called The Place of a Thousand Trips. It's um, in the Smokies at the end of the Roaring Fork Motor Trail. And you get all these little drips of water. Nice. Yeah. So there's a lot of cool apps and cool things um, that you can do, you know, with, with your phone these days. And then from here, uh, get into some of the creative apps. So do we have anything else we want to cover? Well, well a couple of things first. Wise? Sure, um, we have some questions. San Sandy brought out a good point. And she said, um, do you use touch, touch retouch apps? Is yes. Is there anything we can do with it? Absolutely. And I'm actually going to show you that. All right, good. Coming and up. And of course, shortly. We'll, we'll talk about portrait stuff after, but our, our mutual friend, Holly, um, was asking questions about portraits, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Okay. Of uh, the different modes you were discussing. Yes. Well, that's great. So you talked about composition, perspective, framing, mm -hmm. macro panel. And then I like some of the apps you came up with. Uh, reheld, that one reheld, that blows my mind. It's very, very cool. Yeah. I, I, I That was when I saw um, Rick Salmon you started using it on the, uh, the Kelby iPhone conference. Yep this spring and I was just amazed and I immediately downloaded it. And I think it's like, I don't know, five or six bucks maybe. It wasn't too expensive. And it's definitely um, really, really a cool app. I definitely can see myself using that one a lot. It'd be great even if you wanted to get clouds moving or like you're at the beach and you wanna get you know that blur on the waves, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so real quick in the, you were talking about the different modes too. When we had this open, of course, photo is your your normal shooting, um, and then of course you've got video, cinematic. I never really used that one at all. Slow motion, you can do some slow mo stuff in here, and your time lapse, uh, but then you do have the portrait mode, 
And what that does is um, it, it gives you a, I think it's more of like a, a portrait style lens. So you're shooting it it just at one X, you're not it doesn't have the option here to go to mm -hmm. the two or three. And it also gives you options for changing the light and oh. or going black and white. So you can, you know, have natural light or like a studio light, contour, stage light, stage light in black and white, and then high key black and white. So there's a bunch of different things in there. And I'm not really a portrait shooter, so I don't really use as much, but it's definitely a cool option to have. And then of course your pano where you just hit the start and then you can, you know, go across and get your panoramic image that way. Definitely. So those are the basic modes. And then my fun thing to do is all of the people out there who already know me know I love all my creative stuff <laughs> and doing creative apps. Um, so the other thing I was going to mention too, let's see, I'm just checking my notes. Um, we did more, pack. oh, if you wanted to do like action or sports type photography where, you know, something or, or people are moving and that kind of thing, there's a couple ways to get that optimum, you know, capture where you're trying to freeze the images. Um, one of them is to shoot in live view where you can capture several shots at a time and then choose it will actually blend them into you know one one shot and then the other is to shoot in a burst mode uh, which is great for sports when you want your something's moving really quick and then you can choose the one that looks the best um, i was looking up how to do burst mode actually on my phone and on the older phones you would hold down the um let me open this back up. Yeah, the, the shutter. On the older phones, you would just hold down your button and it would take them. But on the iPhone 14, that actually puts you into video mode. On the iPhone 14, oh. you use the volume up button yep. to, to take multiple shots. So I had to look that up because I was like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so, um, so that's a great way to do that. Awesome. It, so we talked also about, oh, a couple other camera type options. Let me go in here. Um, so we talked about the average camera pro, which is very cool. Some of the other ones that I like are, um, there's one called camera plus, which it's similar to the native camera. And I found I used that more um, with the, my older phone because I didn't like the native camera as well with, with the newer iPhones, I think the native camera is is great. Um, the other one that I do like though is called Hydra. This one um, right here, and I use this for HDR. When you really have that lighting situation that um, even the iPhone can't capture well, this is a really cool one, and I've used this quite a bit when I'm out on my um, you know workshops and things. My, don't mind my messy desk. Uh, a lot of things going on right now. But what it will do is um, it's actually had an update. So it used to take just three shots and merge them. Now it determines how many shots it needs to capture the range of light. And then it will blend them into that one shot for you. Now, now this is when you strictly want to stay with your phone. But I know a lot yes. of times like you'll export these and let's say use Luminar Neo's HDR. Yes. Or like you, you got to remove that truck. So in that case, that was a huge, um, yes, content replace. So that's where Photoshop comes in. No, so exactly. that's where you're learning to use the tools at your disposal. Exactly. Um, now, did you have some editing you wanted to show us? Yeah. So I'm going to show you. Um, let me show you first this uh, before and after here, real quick. We were talking about retouch. Um, and I've done a couple things. To, oops. Oh, I was opening up and I didn't really want to open Photoshop, but I, I did, oh, there we are. but that's okay. Um, so in here, I used retouch, uh, which used to be called touch retouch. Now it's just retouch when you see it in the app stores. And that is available for Androids oh. as well. Um, I used that to get rid of this red 
I don't even know what that line was from. This was just a still life at a conference I was teaching at, um, some straw flowers. And, um, and then I got rid of this flower over here on the right with it and this little tiny petal down here. So you got rid of the distraction and you kept the rules of three. Odds, yep. The rules of odds. Exactly. Nice. And then I cropped it a little. So wait, this was at one of your conferences? Not or mine. This was one that I was teaching. I think it was in Niagara Falls, if I remember nice. correctly. Um, or up that way. And then I in with the apps in my phone, I cropped it and I applied some textures. And um the app I love probably the most for creative stuff because I like texture so much is distressed effects. And she has a great library of textures and I can bring this up and show you real quick. Uh, now it's also good to note people that, oh, oh wait, this is strictly an iPhone or I'm sorry. Distressed effects true. is iPhone only. Yes. Yeah, distresses. But the retouch, is it also retouches? PC? Or, I mean, is it also computer or desktop? Or no, just... these are not. These are just phone apps, gotcha. the, these particular ones. So distressed effects, I actually have two. So the first one, when it first came out, you bought the app and then you could add on different um, packs of textures and things. With the newer one, I think it's maybe been about five years or so. Um, it's a little bit more to purchase. I think it's like $11.99 now, but you get all of the packs of apps that it has. So when you first open it, you can see at the bottom, you have overlays here and like more textured things here. But if you come all the way to the end of the rows, you'll see the switch pack and that will take you into all of the other packs that are oh, wow. available. So there's, I counted, I think it's close to 30 packs now. So you, and these would sell for like 99 cents each. So. You, by buying the app at 12 bucks, you're definitely coming out ahead of the game. And as she adds new ones, you get those for free too. Gotcha. So, um, I see, so a lot of times what you'll do is if you took a cell phone shot, mm -hmm. you can actually, because you're using uh, Apple, mm -hmm. bring it to your desktop, make the changes you want, whether you use Luminar Neo, yep. or Photoshop, then you can put it back to your phone. and apply Sometimes it. I do that. Yeah. If I run a play with these kind of apps, I will do that. Um, I love Although Luminar. This is giving me ideas my... that a lot of the stuff you get, like overlays and textures, mm -hmm. you know, applying them inside, like Luminar Neo with, with layers yep. or Photoshop with layers. Yep. Um, but th th this app is so cool. It's actually giving me creative ideas. Yeah. And what's cool about this now, it used to be you could only do like one from the top layer, one from the bottom layer, and then save it and if you wanted to add more you'd have to reopen that as your original gotcha. now if you have and this this image that's showing is just like the default thing but let's say we applied something here and something here um yeah. if i want to now that looks pretty good uh, yeah. if i wanted to save that and add another texture if you just press in the center it will let ah. you flatten that image now Nice. So now that's my original, and now I could come back and, and do the other add side. another so, texture or something else. So Antoinette asks a good question on this. So do you, when you go to take a photo, do you choose the app you want first, or is it just like whatever you see? Yeah, like, it like, I take the photo for the photo generally. Gotcha. Um, you know, because I, I like a particular subject or something, and then I'll go back and and I kind of do the same thing with shots for my cameras. I'll I'll take what I like and then I'll look at it and go, hmm, what can I do with this? And I do that often. And and I know most of you've seen me do it in some of my webinars that I I'll just take an image and start playing around. I'll go into Luminar and I'll do my my corrections and stuff. And then I'll I might go to Photoshop. And I usually use Luminar as a plugin from Photoshop because that's just part of my workflow. Mm -hmm. Um and then I'll go back to Photoshop and go, okay, well, maybe I want to do something in Nick or something in, you know, Jixi Pix or some other app um, and add, or add my own textures and, and things like that. So that's kind of my yeah, general how work. Quick you did that. Um, yeah, I mean, you and it's fun because you can just, okay, if I like that or I don't like that. And then you, you just click things until you find something that you do like. Now, you know, the purest. <laughs> 
oh, the purists are hating us right now. Yeah, which well, is fine. And that's this, fine. I mean, I this, like pure photos too, but. Yeah, so this, yeah. To me, the barn, I think, was more of a snapshot. Hey, yeah, look, I mean, you know, this wasn't my shot. Time, so. In exactly. 2023, you know, this was his barn that was on this property. Exactly. Now, to me, you're just adding more of a creative artistic mm -hmm. look to it. So there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if you're a purist, great. Stay, that's that's fine. Exactly. But don't don't hate on the creative side. <laughs> um, yeah. And I love the creative stuff. I love taking images like with this um, one I just showed you here. Yeah. You know, that looks nothing like that. That's just, yeah, it's OK. It's no big deal. You know, it's nothing special. I still love that. But that's got a whole lot more character. And I've done different versions of this and, you know, different color tones. And it just makes it mine. You know, it, it's a shot that nobody else is going to have. Not that exact way. They may have that same picture of the flowers, but it's not going to look like this when I'm gotcha. done with it. All right. So some of the other apps. So definitely Distressed Effects is one of my faves. Um, then there's one called, let me show it to you here. This one called Sketch Master. I tried quite a few sketch apps because I was looking for something that would really do this effect well. Yeah, never saw that before, something else. Um, and a lot of these apps let you, they have like a camera function so you can actually take the picture through there. I tend to not do that though. I usually take the picture and then I'll decide later you know, what app I want to use. Um, I think my, my attitude on that is that whatever camera, you're, whatever phone you're using, oh, that's a they spent a fortune too. making sure their cameras are perfect. Exactly. Um, so I think I would stick with that. Oh, that's it's, another great one. That's um one that was Image Blender, which I'll talk about in a second. So a what, what are some of the limitations though? Like this, for example, I know we could bring it back in Illuminar and mm -hmm. do the upsize. To make yep. it bigger yes um, but what do you find would you say is a limitation on site on quality wise because i'm sure this looks beautiful on the screen yes and i bet if you printed it even as an eight by ten it'll still keep its beauty yes but if I you're going to go bigger you definitely need to use an upsizing program yeah. like luminar or you know some of the others that are out there um to help make you know make your quality the best for sure and i do that if the if it's something i decide i want to print which i don't do a whole lot of printing not at really large size if i do like want something i usually do canvases like 16 by 20 and then i definitely would upsize yeah. it well here's what's going through my mind you and dave invited me to tennessee so <laughs> i'm gonna have you retrace a lot of these and i can see a lot of this stuff as square maybe 12 by 12 yes printed yeah. and so what 12 12 and 12 36 by 36 mm -hmm. on a wall and just have yes. 12 of those definitely uh, I, I i just I, I think it's cool it's different mm -hmm. uh, but like you said i definitely have to throw it into luminar neo for the upsize yes. to make sure this photo is actually an older one this is from my old phone and i took this somewhere in Virginia on I-81. <laughs> well, <laughs> Dave was driving and it was early morning, it was foggy, and I'm looking out the side window and, you know, I get bored when somebody else is driving. So I had the phone out and this was a quick snap. And I've also processed this several different ways. And I, nice. it's just, I like trees like that. And, and distressed effects um, gave me the textures and the birds and then, um, I use Image Blender to add my logos in the phone. You know, we have about three more minutes. You. Okay. Ooh, so, fast. Um, all right, let me show you a couple real quick then. Let's see, let's go past that. I'm telling you, I still love that one. I did too. I'm just visualizing you so that talking was this... in a lecture and you just say, excuse me, everyone, bip, <laughs> take a picture of the phone. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I, they had like a setups room. So I had oh, some okay. time to go. It wasn't while I was teaching. <laughs> I was teaching at the conference, but not at that moment. Um, this was what I got with the Sketch Master on another old truck. And then one of my other favorite bunch of apps is um, by Jixie Picks. And they have a whole series. And they also have stuff 
for computer as well as phones. And well, they are also them. for Android. There's all but two, I think, of their phone apps that are available on Android. They have what like- What was the name of them again? Jixi Pix, J-I-X-I-P-I-X. Um, and they have, um, it. I usually, when I, they actually have a sale going on, I think still right now um, for the desktop stuff. And once you've purchased something from them the last few years, they've done like a 12 days of Christmas with big discounts and some free stuff. So a lot of their apps for my phone, I've gotten free. This one is Impresso, which gives you a painterly kind of look. Yeah, because I mean, Topaz used to have a lot of that. Exactly. I used to go into Neo, do my routine, yeah. throw it into or Luminar, and then throw it into Topaz for the, um, yeah. for the rendering like this. Mm -hmm. And they haven't really supported that lately. No, so they've like, discontinued shoot. studio and all of the creative that was stuff. The only way I knew how to paint. Well, <laughs> I know I'm not a painter either. But I can um, see this being printed out on canvas. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. And then um, a couple of their other ones, they have a great black and white app um, that does stuff like this. And then one of my favorites is Grunge Tastic. It's yeah. more. Um, gives you that very grungy thing. And I'm so glad I have pictures of this house because it was torn down a about a month ago. Oh. They're gonna be rebuilding a new house there. Um, another one, this was just at another place I shoot at. Yeah, I happen to see this You're taking lantern. ordinary photos. Yeah, and the, the original was like, yeah, okay, it's a lantern. But by using some of these apps, and this one is vintage scene, also from Jixie Pix. And then one more from them is photo artista and this one is more oil painting than than the watercolor gotcha. um and you know I, this one i did some clone out some stuff in the background the one limitation i'm going to show you real quick on the iphone i found with some of the sunrises that it just really wants to saturate the oranges i've had gotcha. some come out really good but i have um, I have a couple here, this one and this one that just, I don't know. I mean, you could pull back on that. Of course, these are unedited, but I found that to be the one limitation with the iPhone is that it really wants to pump up those colors. But other than that, and we can fix that. So I still think their cameras are absolutely amazing and do a, a terrific job. So. Do we have any questions we yep. need to? Yeah, so let, yeah, let's stop sharing the screen for a minute. We'll, we'll okay. answer a couple of questions. Now, um, let me stop my screen. Or, so you stop? I stopped sharing. Gotcha. All right, so um, so a few people were asking, how to get rid of glare from iPhone pictures? Um, I haven't really had an issue with Well, glare, yeah, I so. guess, depending on how you're photographing. Mm -hmm. like, like the example you do with the flower, I thought was awesome. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I were to do a still like now, you said that was part of the conference. Yeah, they had like, you know, like a hijinks room or a setup oh, okay. room where yes. you know, I, they had I, different tables. Like that, me personally, I grab like a um a five one reflector from B and H. Mm -hmm. You know, grab the diffuser, pop yes. that over the light yep. over over the, the flowers. Absolutely. Yes. And it's still I guess I wasn't following or whatever. Yes. Boom. But but yeah, you're yeah. so right now you're you're talking about hey, how can I run and gun using just this? Mm -hmm. You know, um, but they do have the really, really small reflectors that I've seen. Oh, do they? Yeah. I haven't seen oh, yeah. I have one that's about maybe 12 inches. Oh yeah, um, yeah. it's I, just the I've seen even smaller. White. Yeah, white where and people silver, have the five one Oh, I haven't seen the little little one. Yeah, it's one yeah, I have one that's grill. bigger. Yeah, you had a restaurant and some of my buddies will whip that out. Yeah. You know, then huh. you know, hold it over the food and take. Yeah. Their oh, that's a cool idea. I it didn't realize is, they had like, one that small. I'll have to check that it out. Too. It kind of takes away from the, oh, look at this. This was an iPhone or, you know, a Samsung shot. I yep. just happened to have my camera and look what I got. Yeah, right. You also had lighting here or how many yep. times did your friends turn the light on your, your, on your phone yeah. for you? To, to so light you something up. Yeah. The, um, the other thing that's handy. Um, is one of the smaller like tabletop tripods yep. it, to, for your phone. And I have a, a platypod and you can use that with or without a tripod. And that's another great thing. I bought that for my phone. I haven't really used it a whole lot. I need to carry oh, it. I love my platypod. 
Um, but that's another cool, you know, little thing. Awesome. Or like I said, I have a couple of those little fold up tripods. They fold up to, so, you know, so you can throw in yeah, your yeah, pocket. I, I just went on B&H because when, when, when you mentioned that, mm -hmm. I just looked up B&H real quick to see if they sold the apps. Mm -hmm. The apps you buy in the store. But I yep. would do smartphone accessories. Yes. And then you'll see it, like you just said, a ton of the little, you know, little mo yep. tripods, monopods. There's also filters you can get for your phone. Um, yeah. I know a friend of mine has one that will let you do infrared with your iPhone with a, uh, with a filter that she purchased. Um, gotcha. All right, before so, I show you a quick edit, Danny, I'm glad you brought this up. Danny says, hey, this is all great conversation. Um, he says iPhone, but smartphones. But what are the disadvantages? That was something I said to you in the very beginning. You know, what are the, now obviously I'm a sports and portrait for shooter. Right. I can't take this. No. There are limitations you have. Exactly. I, I used to shoot this. auto racing. I would never do it with my phone. Yeah. Um, so I definitely, you know, or if I'm out, you know, in the Smokies and we're hoping to see some bears or something, I'm going to have my 150 to 500. I'm yeah. not going to try to do <laughs> that with my cell hey, phone. Hey, Dave, hey, Danny, honey, <laughs> hold this phone and roll up <laughs> yeah. that bear for me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'll do the scenic stuff there, you know, the, all those pretty landscapes, but definitely not when we're doing the wildlife stuff. Yeah. So, or and, and Kelby, birds or things yeah, like Scott that. Kelby was on our episode, the Art of Photography, last week. And um, he said, someone asked me, do you bring two camera bodies with you when you do your trips? And he said, I do. I bring my camera, my, the camera he's mm -hmm. shooting. He yep. goes, and I bring this with me. Yep. He goes, because if something happens to this, at least I have a fallback. Yep. But, but do keep in mind, there are limitations. And, yes. and I guess the, what the, the best thing to do is to see, like I personally try to photograph kids coming down a water slide. Mm -hmm. yeah not, not that good um yeah <laughs> even with you know that would be difficult yeah I mean, you everything I tried. yeah but there, there are limitations cool um and there's a reason why your mirrorless camera costs three to four grand mm -hmm. you know, and then this here also has a uh, phone capabilities but that's absolutely amazing i'm gonna i'm gonna jump in just for a moment sure and let me i also want to let people know i have notes available for today's session um, my website, so we can talk about that at the end. Yep. All I right, know so a bunch of people right have now, already. You should be seeing yeah. my Iceland trip. Yes. Photo. All right. So, and again, I'm a sports and portrait guy in Iceland, freezing, especially from Florida. <laughs> so I'm going to do a real quick. So imagine if this, I wanted to pull up my cell phone photos I took while I was in um, Utah, but I couldn't find them in time. Uh, I was with Kelby for that. Uh, his his convention he puts on the smart, the iPhone photography course. Yep. So imagine this is my cell phone image. Mm -hmm. All right. So I use right here um, Luminar Connect to my device. Mm -hmm. Now you Mac people have draw, uh, AirDrop and all that. Here, what I like about this is I can connect to my smartphone, yep. and what you see here is what you get on your phone. So I can you know, go back and forth, back and forth to see how it's gonna look on a different display. But I'm gonna do a real quick enhancement. Enhance AI, look at that. Automatically improves yeah. color, detail, tone, and depth. Um, I still can come back in to develop and just maybe increase the black tones and the whites. But here's what I recommend. Actually, now that sky's looking pretty good. Yeah, Originally, that's... I was going to replace the sky. Hmm. Let's see what we can bring out in structure. Yeah, look at that. Now, yeah. I'll be the first to admit, I am heavy, heavy, heavy on structure. I love this. <laughs> I love it. Jim Nix flips out on me. So, <laughs> to appease my landscape friends, I'll dial it back a bit. But what I can also do is I could use the the... the the masking brush mm -hmm. and I'm going to lower my strength a little bit. And what I'm going to do in a case like this, let's say they always yell at me about the sky. So I'm going to not make the sky as intense, mm -hmm. but I, I, I love the structure down here. I'm going to leave it. All right. <laughs> yeah. And it looks great. Let's go uh, to foreground. what was that? It looks great on the foreground. Yeah. So, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to come down to relight. 
here we go, or up to, watch the, this I absolutely love. Yeah. So I'm going to, it's going to show me, look at this. I'm using the foreground and the background. And I want to, I want to darken the back, the foreground just a bit, just a little bit more light to the front. Mm -hmm. Now that I have that set, I'm going to come back. And the neat thing about this is your edits, think of this as your um, history. Mm -hmm. So even though I used Enhance AI here, I'm going to use Enhance AI again. And I'm make a global change. Nice. Oh, actually, I like that a lot. I'm going to use Enhance AI for a third time. <laughs> and I'm going to make a global change. Now I'm going to come in and I'll use the radiant brush or the radiant, well, yeah, the, ra the radial gradient. And what I want to do is only apply that effect just there, nowhere else. Mm -hmm. And look what that just did. Nice. And one more. Choose the subject. And I'm going to add a vignette. But the difference is I want to pop a little inner light. Feather it. So let's see if that makes a difference. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Nice. That's how it brought it back out a little bit. Mm -hmm. There we go. I actually like that quite a bit. And then, of course, color. I could desaturate globally, but then vibrancy, bring back the muted of the colors. Mm. There we go. And now, what I can foresee with what you just showed me. So imagine, I, I, I love how this looks. Look at from this to this. Now I can see taking it into one of the apps you just mentioned and do mm -hmm. that really cool painterly effect. Yeah. To it. Um, but now we do it from here, you know, where, where I can connect to my phone mm -hmm. or um, just export it to a Google Drive or something and, mm -hmm. you know, take it from there. But, but, you gave me so many cool ideas on, you know, if, if I want a real quick down and dirty, I'm out in the, I'm out, don't have my computer with me, snap, snap, here's my shots done. Or if I have more time, come home, do my edits the way I want. Maybe if there are people in the scene, erase them, mm -hmm. prep the image the way you want it. Mm -hmm. And again, whether you're using Luminar Neo, Photoshop, Lightroom, whatever it is, there it is shoot it back into one of those apps yes and then create it and then a lot of times i'll bring it back in Luminar neo and that accent ai just mm -hmm. always like you saw it I, yeah I, it's amazing i know i use that all the time and that's how i do probably the majority of my my editing now it, rather than you know i'll bring something into photoshop but then i'll launch into neo because um, i tend to use it as a plug-in and then you know but i'll use Accent AI is great. I use that. Or all if, the I'm, time. if I'm creating a poster, we don't mm -hmm. do text in, in Luminar Neo, jump right. in. So the point we're getting at is use the tools that are available to you. Mm -hmm. um, and then for a smartphone, I mean, like you said, go to the BH website. Uh, do you do a lot of the filters with the phones? I haven't done a ton with the new phone. I had a couple of the like clip on cameras for the old phone. Gotcha. Um, the Allo clip, which they don't even make anymore. Um, I guess with all the the newer phone cameras that they don't really need to, That's you true. know, well, and they well, kind of made them obsolete. But I haven't tried a lot of the field. I have to get a couple things and nice. play around. I think what we should do is when um <laughs> when I do head to Tennessee with you guys, uh, me, you, and Dave go out. Maybe maybe we should do a little shopping spree and and just see yeah, yeah. like different <laughs> different app. I'm a gadget guy. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll be the first one that I, I like. My problem is I get all these gadgets and then I forget I have them. Yeah. <laughs> and they're but in no, the closet what, when I'm out shooting, you know. But what I, what I think will be really cool is if, um, you know, if you say, okay, I'll tell you what, here, you're limited to these accessories. Mm -hmm. Let's just spend the day, whether we go out on shoots, like that barn you got. Uh, the yeah, one we I like that splash image. I want that shot so bad. It's just one to of say my I took it. Um, but, but imagine if we go out shooting like that and then challenge ourselves, we go out to eat for sushi, of course. Um, who can get the best sushi shots? I don't know, you know? I'm not a big sushi person. But. Yes. Um, so, but, but no, but I, I think, if, it, and if I, correct me if I'm wrong, but you feel the, the, the phone 
is a great tool to have when yes. you're out and about and you just want to either snap memories or create art. Absolutely. I and I use it for both. Like I said, you know, I was making a coffee cake last night with some fresh blueberries we got and I <laughs> took a picture of course and posted it but you know and that's a snapshot but I still did just you know basic editings and like I said the the basic editor even in the iPhone now is just as good but a lot of times I'll use Snapseed as kind of my my go-to but the basic stuff works really yeah, that, that well. That was too. one of my favorite when uh, Google when Google took over they have Snapseed but then they ditched the Nick effects. Which, yeah well yeah that was you know, and, and the funny thing about that with, with the nick effects what i loved was silver effects pro but, oh yeah i still use that all the time but the problem was that's black boxed meaning you don't know how they you click on something it looks cool but you have no idea how it was created actually with right? the new version you can tell yeah but you have to go behind the scenes with it no but with neo with neo that was one thing we we told our engineers i stressed to them so they look you know, I loved how Silver Effects, please don't do that to our stuff. And mm -hmm. thankfully they listened because some, some of the stuff you have on Marketplace, um, mm -hmm. you can actually see how it was created. You click yeah. on the preset, you look at, oh, look, I see what Meredith did. That's yeah, so cool. yeah, I do like that with the, the presets in, in uh, Neo that you can, can see what they do for yep. sure. All right, so we have three minutes. Where yeah. can we find out more about you? So let other... I'll, I mean, I'm taking advantage of our friendship by visiting you guys in Tennessee. <laughs> Anytime. Um, we'll, we yeah. will definitely get something scheduled soon. Yeah. But for everyone else that do doesn't have that, unless. Um, I can I share my screen for a sec? Yep. Fire away. Fidelian that. friends. Hey, Meredith, you said I could bring some friends. <laughs> <laughs> and we have two guest rooms. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about 40 people. Oh, Anyhow, well, I don't know about that. But let's go down here to the end. So where can we find? And we can um, from here. Um, this is my website, meredithimages.com. As I mentioned, I have the notes for today's webinar, um, which are more detailed. I mean, we talked about things in a more casual way, but all of this information and a whole lot more is yeah. in there. You just go to the Peacock Studio, which is my online store under webinar notes. And here's the link for Skylum as well as BNH. And yeah, um, keep, yeah, keep in mind, be, use the BNH link for, yeah. for Luminar because then the store gets credit for it. Perfect. Plus, I think there's a little discount that they offer. So okay. if you have your smartphone, quickly take a picture of the yeah, screen. Definitely. Watching it on the computer, then obviously um, just screen capture it. Mm -hmm. So where, where are you on Facebook? Um, you can, on Facebook, both, I have my own page and Meredith Images. Um, you can look up Meredith Images on Pinterest, on Instagram, on uh, Twitter. I don't do a ton on on those, but I, I occasionally jump in there. Um, Facebook, definitely. I have a textures group um, on Facebook as well. Um, so you nice. can, you know, contact me. Yeah, you are, you are the king of texture. I, I just love doing that. Um, I find it, it's just fun. Like I said, it makes, you can make that image uniquely your own. And of yeah. course, I sell textures. Yeah, I give away free I textures every see, week. I can see My us God. going around, snapping what three, six, nine shots, and and turn them into the little arts and putting them on the wall. Two foot, no, well, mm -hmm. one foot, twelve by twelves. Right, just a beautiful piece. That would be very cool. So yeah, before very we end, our good friend Holly, uh, to answer your question, Holly, about portraits. Well, I know on our DS, our mirrorless. The, the lens itself has a minimal focus distance. I know if you're using the portrait app yes. on your phones, it may have that same stipulation to it be like eight feet away. It does. Sure. I don't remember what it is, what the distance is, but I know it does have, you know, it makes you get within a certain range exactly. of the person. Yeah. So just, just pop it back in a regular photo mode and set the shot. Um, but again, th those I think are, you're at your child's graduation, um, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't have your whole gear with you. Right. You know, you, you pull out that phone, boom, you caught a great snapshot of the moment. Now take it into some of these programs and turn it into a work of art. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, hey, Mary, thank you so much for your time. No this problem. Was Thanks for having me. Awesome. Yeah. Lots of great info. I hope everybody enjoyed it. And um, I know it's being recorded, so you can watch again once it's posted. I'll, I'll share the link when I get it 
in my blog for everybody. Yeah, please, and for everyone else, if you have a photographer friend that you feel this will be helpful for, please, by all means, shoot this to them. Be careful of the purists, though. And don't, don't start any <laughs> battles on Facebook when you send it to a... There's a place for both. Everybody know, can be happy. <laughs> so, well, thank you again on behalf of Alrighty. ENH and um, Luminar. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And we'll see you at the next Art of Photography. Thanks. Take care, everybody.